Today, we will be discussing Ben Crump's $500 million lawsuit against the city of Beverly Hills. We will be analyzing the lawsuit to see if Mr. Crump's lawsuit has merit, or is he just Crumpty Dumpty? Oh yeah, before we get to work, we will be discussing whether or not the community should be considered in this lawsuit. We are suing Beverly Hills for $500 million. Since 1995, there have been claims of racial profiling. 28 years, and yet nothing has changed. If anything, it's become worse. It wasn't to deter crime. It was to send a message to black people that we don't want your kind around here. In two years, 1,088 black people arrested, only two convictions. There's only one explanation for that. They want to drive black people out of the city. I was stopped just for being black while driving in Beverly Hills. These officers got behind my vehicle, doing the lights, pulled me over. I spent three days in jail. Humiliating, scary, sad. Ben Crump says that in a 24 month time period, 1,088 black people were arrested for shoplifting in the city of Beverly Hills. These arrests occurred between August 2018 till August 2021. The key thing is that there were only two convictions. Now this represents a conviction rate of less than two tenths of 1%. Now the 1,088 arrests represent 34% of all the arrests in the city of Beverly Hills. That means that in Beverly Hills, shoplifting is a crisis. Black people are only 2% of the population in Beverly Hills, and we all know what that means. That means that out of every 100 people, only two of them are black, and we all know this to be true. Of those two people, one of them has to be mixed. You know, in those shops in Beverly Hills, it's easy to pay $1,000 for a t-shirt or just a simple shirt. My question is, why don't these shops in Beverly Hills convict the shoplifters? Let's find out why. Stores don't want to be sued for wrongful prosecution. Stores don't want to create scenes in the store which makes other customers nervous. They don't want their insurance to go up. They're also worried about mass shootings or retaliation. The losses from employee theft are far greater than the losses from shoplifting. To keep things calm and kosher, most stores would rather just to bar the people from their stores. Now let's see what the city of Beverly Hills has to say about this lawsuit. Beverly Hills' rebuttal is really simple. They are simply saying that Team Crump is cherry picking the data and misinterpreting the results. You know what they say, you can prove anything statistically. We have heard the Crump team's class action lawsuit against the city of Beverly Hills. We have also heard the city of Beverly Hills' rebuttal. We have discussed how the stores view shoplifting. We have also relayed the applicable statistics to the germane facets of this lawsuit. But now I have something special for you. I interviewed a loss prevention officer that worked in a store on Rodeo Drive. Now, he will only be going over what he personally saw and what he personally feels. So please don't let this taint your judgment at all. I'm here with Gene. He's basically going to be telling us how he worked in Beverly Hills in loss prevention at one of the stores on Rodeo Drive. Where are you from, Gene? I'm from Compton, California. Um, been born and raised there. What were you expecting to see in Beverly Hills as far as black people? Actually, I was thinking I was gonna see very few black people out in Beverly Hills. What percentage of the customers that came into the stores were actually black? I would say 50%. You do know that the black population in Beverly Hills is 2% black. So can we reasonably assume that most of those people were from somewhere else? Yes. 
of the 50% of the black people that came into the store, what percentage were black males versus black females? 80% black male and about 20% black females. How did your store view shoplifting when they got caught? If they returned the merchandise and the merchandise wasn't destroyed, they wouldn't take them to jail. They had to have them return the merchandise and they just borrowed from the store. Of the people that got caught uh, in the store, what percentage of those people were black? I have to say about 65%. What percentage of those were male versus female? Actually, in the three months I was there, all of them were male. What was the age of the black males that you guys normally caught shoplifting in your store? 17 to like 36 was about the highest. How was the attitude of the white people that you caught? When they got caught, they put their credit cards out and they wanted to pay for the merchandise plus give extra money, like an extra hundred, just not to be have the police show up. But what was the attitude of the black people that you caught? Oh, it was all hostile. It was... Uh, Sometimes they had destroyed the merchandise by pulling the tags off. None of them had uh, money to really pay for the merchandise that they destroyed. And it was in denial. It wasn't even like, you, you know, you get caught. It's not even like, okay, you caught me. I apologize. Uh, you know, is there any way I can uh, do anything to, like, reconcile this? It, it, was, it was none of that. It was, it, was all, it was all just denial, arguing, and that type of thing, all mouth service. Okay. What was the reason that you decided to quit working there? It was too many confrontations. I just got tired. Do you think that this lawsuit has merit? No, I, I don't think it has much merit. Uh, Gene, would you say that the owner of that store made lots of money off of black people? Uh, yes, he did, because a lot of the uh, things that they sold in there or uh, high-end things that like a lot of the known rappers wear, like a lot of the gear. And um, and even, they, they sold new merchandise and used merchandise. Some of the shirts just for you, some of the used shirts can go up to, sell up to like seven, eight hundred dollars. And a lot of the new merchandise, it, it, can run, it can run in the thousands with jackets, shirts, shoes. For the last question I'd like to ask you, now why do you think that the owners normally don't prosecute the people they catch shoplifting. I, I think that some of it uh, was because of retaliation. And then with the law now, a lot of times they just let them out of let them out of jail. Like if they take them a short time, they let them right out. And a lot of time, I think they didn't even want to deal with the retaliation or anything. So. They would be happy just getting their merchandise. Since I, that's what I witnessed when I was working there. Getting their merchandise, and long as it's not destroyed, if, if it was destroyed, if they paid for it, they were good with that. And they just banned them from the store. Considering the facts, do you think that a class action lawsuit for half a billion dollars should offer something for the most vulnerable in our community? Our kids. And I'm not talking about just throwing money at something. I'm talking about giving something that will keep teaching and keep giving. Like internships, trade schools, math and science programs, teaching financial literacy, and a commitment to self and community. Tell me, what do you think? Leave a comment.